28 in the morning. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Swami's entered. One second. So I wish to be a first speaker and I have a, I've called for the collector and I'm into a major inquiry right now. Okay, no problem. We'll, we'll allow you to be the first speaker. Morning, I mean, good evening, Dr. Swami. Swami is joining, Amit Thakur is admitted. And uh, here we go. Namaskar, Dr. Swami, how are you? Namaskar, dear. Uh, so we start the meeting. Uh, Hi Amit. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, one second. I think it's probably muted. No, 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 hold it, hold it. I, I've got Gitanjali also admitted in one minute. I'm, I'm a little uh, not. Here we go. Gitanjali, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, can everyone hear us? We're on it. Okay. Uh, Namaskar ji, uh, I am the moderator. The Gandhian goal of independence was to give us Azadi. We need Arthik Azadi. Uh, you know, we are doing this with no selfish interest. Uh, as the Bhagavad Gita says, Karmani Adhikarasya Mahafale Shukla Rachina Mahakarmane Pale Hektur Murva Tet Santushta Karmana. So we are doing this way. We are trying to make sure that this is done for the welfare of the people of India and for the common man. We need to have zero tolerance for corruption and zero tolerance for pollution. And this can only come through capital uh, reforms and for and judicial reforms. So I'm going to admit, uh, hi, Gitanjali. I'm going to have Kiran Bedi's first speak on uh, judicial reforms. Uh, uh, so go ahead, Kiranji, you're on. It's not on judicial reforms, it's on good governance. Okay. Because judicial reforms cannot happen without good governance. All reforms are possible only when you have good governance. And here are my parameters for what is good governance. I have the Excuse United me, Nations. I this conversation if I have everyone's permission, if not, we won't. As far as I'm concerned, you can. Okay. What about you, Dr. Swami? Well, she's right. Uh, good, governance, uh, gov good governance is the... Uh, no, no, can I record? I, I need permission. Unless you say oh. I can record, I cannot. Oh, you need my permission. Oh, uh, that's uh, taken for granted. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, good. But Gitanji, uh, we are recording it now. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. The United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific defines good governance parameters. Eight major characteristics. It's supposed to be participatory, consensus-oriented, accountable, transparent, responsive, effective, and efficient, equitable, and inclusive and follows the rule of law. It assures that the corruption is minimized and that it is also responsive to the present and future needs of the society. Based on this definition, since I am I'm not going to the realm of judicial reforms or economic reforms because I'm not that. I am an executive administrator and according to me as an executive administrator, what brings good governance? I'm speaking through my 40 years of administrative experience. And for me, the parameters are under this definition. That a good governance, first of all, has to be reliable. And that it has proper audit systems in place. Now, India has Comptroller and Auditor General and we have our audits. But we need to, we have these systems in place they can be more vigorous. Because I've seen that many audit objections lie pending for months and years together. 
And then some of these audit objections are looked after by political committees, by the elected assemblies, and then they get under the carpet. So I think that's one area of reliability is that it must have put, that means if we want to strengthen our system governance, we need to strengthen our audit system, then you are one of them. So you will get my first opening statement is of the need for aggressive audit systems. Second point of mine is how accessible it is. Is it how accessible? Now, that basically means that how can, the point is it is accessible, but it, can it be more? Our MLAs are accessible, but when are they accessible? Some of them are thoroughly accessible. I know certain prime ministers, they used to have a uh, open darbar in the mornings. I was part of the security system. So how accessible and in what manner accessible and what for accessible? Today we have I, electronics accessibility. We've got everything you can go to mygovernment.in, mygov.in. You can put a grievance address in, you are accessible, which means there is accessibility. But now there is because of certain security reasons, it's more of electronic accessibility. So we have, those days you never had electronics accessibility. Now you have the privilege of websites and the Twitters and the accessibility because you tweet your grievance and it's getting responded. I did. I used a Twitter to bring in the Indian Council of Medical Research into Pondicherry to fight COVID for me and it worked. The SOS web, uh, uh, sent to the Prime Minister's office worked because at uh, that time is the time when I did. So you see, you have these accessibilities. But very important part of railways, um, MEA Sushma Suraj, we are all remembering her that she was very... So the second point is accessibility. Third is how visible it is. Is it how visible? In the sense of town halls. How often do our elected, our bureaucrats hold town halls? So town hall, I know be, be, having been at the United Nations, how we used to have a regular town halls. Visibility comes from town halls. So second, third is visibility. So as a field worker, do, and, uh, do I get to see my uh, decision makers and policy makers and have a dialogue with them and question them and ask which project is costing how much, by when will it finish, who is the contractor, and what basis have you given? So it's about the, the, uh, the visibility for questioning. Fourth, how caring it is. In the caring, I think India is scoring very high. In the sense, the score of the Indian is the Indian Jandhan, Prime Minister Jandhan Yojana has reached to 412 million people. Jandhan, Swachh Bharat has reached out to 107 million houses. I've got these figures uh, which are authenticated. Household, household toilets, 107.074 million. Other things like Suraksha Bhima, 154 million people have benefited already by it. It's reached out to them. Aish, Aishman Bharat, 107 million. Prime Minister's Kisan Samandhi, which is a Kisan benefit going DPT, is to 84.6 million. Now, that's called care. For me, this is Mudra scheme has reached out to 62 million, which is small loans for starting your own entrepreneurship. Prime Minister Avas Yojana, which is housing for all, has reached out to 11.2 million. Atal Pension Yojana, 14.9453 million. Jeevan Jyoti Bhima, 59 million. So, similarly, there is a DPT, direct transfer, by direct transfer, no money lost in transmission at all, at all. I've seen the benefit directly in Pondicherry. Nobody has been able to take their own shares out of it. And it's hurt where it hurts the most, where everybody had a share. And if you remember, Rajiv Gandhi used to himself say, you get only 18 rupees out of 100 to the common man. It's not like that anymore. Whatever money is released by the government of India, it goes straight to the pockets, which has been 160 million. DPT transfer has been 10.74, sorry, 16.01 crore beneficiaries and 160 million. More than 36,659 crores has gone by DBT. So I, uh, I, these are what I wanted to say. How caring is it? I think in the recent years, I've seen very high rate of caring 
by the government of India through centrally sponsored schemes and these DPTs, whether it's insurance or pensions. There's a widow pension in, uh, in Puducherry. There's a disability pension. There's a girl child pension. There's a little marriage allowance. There's a Diwali gift. There is a, or everything. School is free for child, children up to almost anywhere. Scholarships to the uh, weaker sections of society, even joining medical colleges, they get the full fee paid. So it's just uh, three fourths of my our budgetary budget is all on care and welfare. So it's people's money going back to the people. So it's really keeping the economy very well because it's government money coming, going straight DPT to the people and it goes straight to the market. Also long and during COVID time, we've seen amazing care. Everybody, everybody had free rice. Everybody had free uh, pulses delivered at the doorstep. So no family went through without provisions. This is all a matter of record. Second then is how inclusive is it? As I said, how inclusive is this? Jandan Jojra, I've already told, where a poor man has a bank account and, and also has an insurance on that. Then comes how participatory it is. That's where it's a panchayat system. Our six lakh plus villages, the panchayat system is very, very participatory. Now, the question is the quality of participation. It's the training of participation. But systems are in place. How provided it is, I've given you how well provided it is. How evolving it is, I've shown you these are all evolving policies as I see very innovative and evolving problems. How quick it is, I've seen the quickness during COVID times. It's been lightning. These, it's been these, these privileges which are on uh, benefits which came were at lightning speed and at total credibility because I'm a distributor here and it did not take any loss of time. How sensitive it was, we were tracked by the Home Ministry all the time to see that all this goes sensitively to the people and that it's delivered at the doorstep. So we hired trucks, we had whatever, whatever we did, it was de delivered at, and it was delivered with sensitivity. How accountable it was, we were all, we were being watched by dashboards, by dashboards whether how much has been delivered and how much it is like COVID is being uh, delivered by how many tests we've done, how many deaths we've had, where is the clinical management of it, where is the clinical analysis of it. So all this is now also being very, very accountable because every case which is happening is known to the government of India. What we're doing with it is also known to them. So this is very high accountability in the current situation of these sensitivities of governance. And the last but not the least is how problem solving it is. I've seen this happen, that it's been in. Now, I'm not only macro and the microeconomics, but I'm only talking to you about governance, governing for the people, and that to, to the commonest, weaker sections of society who are most vulnerable. The scheduled caste, the scheduled tribe, the tribals, etc. They're all beneficiaries of these schemes at the moment. I've not said it, it's not a political statement, I've collected these figures and I'm on record to say this is coming from the government's websites, the mygovernment.in and what the Prime Minister has, has been saying time to time. So hence, I would say that key to governance is how trusting it is. Somebody's mic is disturbed. How trusting it is. But I've already given you the facts and figures and that is benefiting the current government today. Women are getting the, uh, the cylinders, women are getting all the bedway and they are responding to it because a woman needs water. She's getting water running in the tap. In the tap. Now it's hal nal me jal nal me. So it's now working as jal shakti which you have a separate ministry. So I thought I would share with you as I have experienced as, um, as good governance. Of course there are many aspects to governance. I would look at policing, I would rule of law, I would certainly concede that our, our rule of law and judiciary needs to have expedite its criminal justice system. For that, huge budgetary requirements are required because every policeman costs a lot of money. You need money. Similar justice in health. Similarly, every court requires. But certainly there's a need for expeditious criminal justice system, which would strengthen governance all across. Thank you, sir.